Hello everyone and welcome to this new and exciting session in which we are going to look at other state-of-the-art convolutional neural network based model. And talking about state-of-the-art models, 10 years ago in the ImageNet visual recognition challenge, the AlexNet convolutional neural network beat all state-of-the-art solutions. Previously or before this AlexNet solution, state-of-the-art methods achieved a top error rate of uh, top 5% error rate of 25.3%. But with AlexNet, we dropped this error rate to 15.3%. Now, this is 25.2%. This breakthrough has led to a widespread adoption of convolutional neural networks in solving recognition tasks like this one and although today we would hardly use this kind of uh, model that's to say the AlexNet model we are going to discuss this model because it was a precursor to most of the modern kind of nets we have today like the mobile nets dense nets and efficient nets that said we are going to see what makes or what made the AlexNet model so powerful don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss amazing content like this. The AlexNet model was first published in this paper entitled ImageNet Classification with Deep Convolutional Neural Networks. Just from the title, you could get some idea that this was one of the first times ConvNets were used for this ImageNet challenge. This paper was by Alex Krzyzewski, Ilya Sosekar, and Jeffrey E. Hinton. In the abstract, they start by presenting the results. As you could see here on the test data, they achieved top 1 and top 5 error rates of 37.5% and 17%, which is considerably better than the previous state of the art. Now, this model was a 60 million parameter model composed of conf layers and max pooling layers with uh, some final three fully connected layers as we shall see in the on the, in the model section shortly now your 1000 way softmax because we have 1000 classes they also try to reduce overfitting by implementing strategies like drop out in data augmentation that said you already discussed the data set which was used uh, obviously the image net which is a 50 million uh, labeled high resolution uh, image data set although the finally used roughly 1.2 million training images, 50,000 validation, and 150,000 for testing. Then it's also important to note that the images which were used for training were downsampled to 256 by 256 images. As for the overall architecture, as we could see here, we have the conf layers followed by max pooling layers. Sometimes you see your conf layer, max pooling conf layer max pooling then we have several conf layers this max pooling layer and then we have three dense layers you see here we have this dense layer this dense layer and this final dense layer with a thousand way output then another point to note here is given that at the time many times the nonlinearity used was the tange or the sigmoid let's get back to this top here you see here they talk about the nonlinearity which was used um just here the pre previously were the, the mostly used the tange or the sigmoid as they say here but it turns out that after working with the relu the relu if you can recall uh, we've seen this in the previous section the relu is simply this function which takes in a value x and then if x is negative the value is zero if x is positive it remains the same value so basically we have x uh f of x f of x here which is our relu function which is zero if x is less than zero and it is x if x is greater than or equal to zero so this is our relu function right here and what they discovered was that the relu permitted them to train their model much faster than this previously used nonlinearities like the tang of x so as you could see here just after a few epochs just after uh, let's say five epochs they attain this training error rate as compared to this other nonlinearity here so this is what we get when we use 
the ReLU, and this is what we get when we use some other nonlinearity like the Tange X. And it's important to note that till date, most uh, conf nets we build make use of this ReLU nonlinearity. Another thing they did to speed up the training was to use multiple GPUs. Then the actual number of GPUs they use here is two and the device a method of communication between these two GPUs to speed up calculation. From here, the authors make use of this normalization strategy for regularization known as a local response normalization. And this normalization strategy was used alongside the ReLU nonlinearity. So from here, we have some inputs. Let's take this um, schematic from this post by Akil Anwar, where he shows this even more clearly. Here we have some input, and then we normalize it based on its surroundings. Hence the term local response normalization. Here he explains that there is a uh, interchannel local response normalization and there's intra-channel local response normalization here as you can see this is uh between pixels of a given channel or neurons of a given channel and here this is inter-channel so this is carry out between pixels of different channels now that said the exact mathematical formula used here is this one so here we have a given neuron and then we divide its value by this summation right here, which is the square of some neck boring values. And according to, to the author's terms, here you they say this sort of response normalization implements a form of lateral inhibition. So take note of this. And it's inspired by the type found in real neurons, creating competition for big activities amongst neuron outputs computed using different kernels. So this means that if we consider these three neck boring channels from or rather these three neck boring neurons from these three different channels, if we take this particular neuron right here and we try to normalize it or pass it through a normalization layer, given that it is surrounded by this pixel whose value is relatively high, because of this squared term right here, notice this is squared right here, meaning that you take this value, say one, divide it some, uh, by some summation, and then you have this alpha, obviously you have this k right here, let's omit that, let's just put it right here, we have this alpha, and then we have uh, this value squared. So obviously this would be a function, or uh, basically this will be this value here. So when you square this value, it means that this overall value here will become very small, hence the term lateral inhibition. And so for a neuron to maintain a relatively high value after going through this local response normalization layer right here, it has to ensure that it has one of the highest values among the surrounding neurons. Nonetheless, this local response normalization as compared to other normalization techniques like the batch normalization, layer normalization, and the group uh, normalization hasn't proven to be very effective when it comes to regularizing a neural network, hence not used by modern conf nets. We had seen in the previous sessions that the pooling layers permit us downsample information from the inputs such that as we go deeper in the neural network, we have a reduced number of features. Now in this paper, they make use of this uh, pooling layer, more specifically the max pool layer, and the way it works is quite straightforward. So we're supposing we have this kind of input, and then we have a three by three max pool layer with uh, initially a stride of one. What we're gonna have here is we have this uh, positions which we're gonna fix here. Let's um, get back and then fix some values. So let's say we have a value of 1, 2, and then all these other values. If we want to carry out the max pool operation with a stride of 1, we'll start with this here. 
you see and because it is max pool we have we're gonna pick the max of all this so we have the highest value here is 11 and so here we're gonna have 11 and then the next thing we'll do is we are gonna shift this so we shift this here uh, since the stride of one we're gonna go one step to the right and so we have this now you see here notice how we still pick out three by three uh, pixels let's not take this one off so we've sh done the shift and now we are this position we take the max here the max here again is going to give us 11 so we have 11 here and then we're gonna do another shift so from here we're gonna um, take this here let's take this off we'll do this other shift and then we still have this the max here again is gonna be 11 so you see at this top we have 11 11 11 and then from here we'll move on to this next one so we will go downward um one step downward we'll have this here and the max here is going to be here's 11 still so we're going to have 11 here and then we'll move this way this way we'll go downward and all of that so if we move this way i think we should have 11 still the other way 11 uh, we go downward we still have 11 practically we will have 11 everywhere so we would have 11 and your 11 so this is going to be our output from this input here after the max pull operation now when we modify this stride number from one to two take this stride number from one to two as it was illustrated in the paper instead of having or instead of moving through one step we move through two steps so if we take this off here you would see that we'll start with this so from the first one we're going to get 11 so this was stride equal to two so the first one we get 11 and then from here instead of moving just one step like previously we had this here we have this here and then we move one step now we're going to move two steps so we move this way and then again we have 11 and then instead of going one step downward we're going to go two steps downward and so we'll end up um here and then we have a maximum of 11 and then we'll go two steps again this way so let's take this one off take this one off we we'll go two steps again and then we get a maximum of 11 right here so as you could see here when you talk of overlapping pulling they actually use a stride of two just as we have described and then the founders to give them uh, or to give an improvement in the results though these improvements aren't very much so in practice we generally use um the classical max pooling with s equal one that's stride number equal one and we also use two by two kennel size so instead of using three by three kennel sizes as you see here most times or in modern nets generally use two by two pull in size now getting back to the general architecture we could see here that this very first conf net has a kernel size of 11 by 11 and although this kinds of kernels permit the network capture much larger spatial context we'll see that they are computationally much more expensive compared to these kernels with smaller filter size. And as we'll see in subsequent sections, the confidence developed after this didn't use this kinds of large kernel sizes. As they were able to make use of these kinds of smaller filters to still capture this large spatial context, the 11 by 11 filters capture then to overcome overfitting the others make use of data augmentation and the dropout technique so you could check out on our previous sessions where we talk about this two different techniques now that said you would see here the training details and then one very interesting advantage of working with the 11 by 11 kernel size filters is the fact that we could have visualizations like this so because those kernel sizes are large enough, we could visualize them in this manner. And then clearly from here, we see how our conf layer 
captures this kinds of low level features like here we have a slanted line here we have yeah many slanted lines we have this vertical line we have this horizontal lines right here and then we have this this checkerboard pattern we have this colors sometimes dual sometimes single color and so we see how this first conf layers permit us capture low level features in this section they discuss this record breaking results as you can see we have this top one error rate which uh, for now or at that time was about 45.7 percent and then with this uh conf net model this was dropped to 37.5 percent then for the top five we have a uh, drop from 25.7 to 17 percent now they also developed this other variant which comes with an even better top five uh, error rate of 15.3 percent and so as you could see here we're moving from this previous method that's a shift plus fvs which had 26.2 top 5 percent error rate to the cnn which has 15.3 percent error rate then in the section on qualitative results we see here the different uh inputs the correct levels and then what the model predicts or the top five best predictions see the model does well here does well here uh correct correct prediction uh here is wrong see it predicts convertible when it's actually a grill here it does uh this wrongly here it's also wrong but uh unlike here this level doesn't even occur among the top five best predictions and so that's it for this breakthrough model we're going to look at other confnet models in the next sections